Um, but other than that, there's still lots of uh, great information in that. Okay, moving on. What have we got? Ah, here's a change of pace. Tremors. This um, book is written by Jonathan Melville, um, and I met him when I was at Edinburgh Horicon. He's a really nice guy, and he's put together a really great-looking book, um, which I've heard people really enjoying. And they went to a talk that he gave at the Horicon about, about tremors, and he really knows his stuff, and he's been able to talk to loads of people um, who were original cast members and crew of the various parts of the franchise, and includes Kevin Bacon and Michael Gross, who writes the foreword, um, Galan Hurd. So he's really been able to get a lot of people uh, on board with the book and you know if you're into tremors this is a great way to explore not only the the original film which was a flop when it first came out but actually started to gain momentum on home video um but also it ended up leading to loads of different sequels some of which is i mean there's one sequel for tremors that wasn't that long ago which is out um and even a short-lived tv show now um can i i'll be honest with you right um I haven't really seen a lot of Tremors films. I've seen the first one um, when I was younger. I I can't remember it loads. Uh, um, and so I'm not like an uber Tremors fan, but this book does um, prompt one to reassess uh, Tremors and go back to watch it again and maybe explore the sequels too, because these, these films have a real um, uh, dedicated fan base. They really uh, do resonate with people. Okay, what have we got up next? Ah, yeah, Killian Gore. Killian Gore, um, he's an interesting... Another guy from the Horicon that I met. Uh, I've met him a few times now. We sort of hung out because we're often, when I'm doing um, book signings, we often seem to be in, in the same kind of ta table area. Um, but this is, this is cool. He writes horror quiz books. And um, if you want to test out your knowledge of horror, um, test out your friends, or just get somebody to buy a book for you and you get them to ask you the questions so you can impress them uh, or impress yourself, then, yeah, he, he does loads of horror books. Um, he does them spe on specific films. For example, there's the one for Plan 9 from Outer Space. Questions all about that film. He does ones for The Shining, for um, uh, the... What else do you do? Evil Dead... Um, the Burbs, a whole bunch of different like film specific uh, films, uh, books. But he also does other ones like this, which is the kind of the huge horror movie quiz book. And um, yeah, it's cool. I mean, just a very quick, uh, like here's a one from The Thing. Uh, in which other John Carpenter movie does the original The Thing from Another World appear on television? I know the answer. Do you? On oh, this one, um, what is the original title of the 1985 slasher movie, The Mutilator? I know that answer too. Hooray for me. But mind you, there are some questions in this that I struggle to answer. So it's not, it's, it's got a good mix of easy-ish um, to uh, middling to actually quite challenging. Really worth checking out. Um, the, the Killian Gore is a really nice guy. He's a lovely bloke. Um, and his books are lovingly put together. He's done some fiction too, by the way. So you can check that out as well. What's next? Oof, time for heaviness again. Here we go. He, this. Let's go classic. Dante's Divine Comedy. Look at the size of that. That looks like a normal sized book and I'm just a sort of really tiny midget or something. But Dante's Divine Comedy uh, with, with the uh, the classic illustration illustrations by Gustav Doré. Now I've talked about this, uh, this book a little bit in my video about depictions of hell. And of course this is um, the, the famous and infamous story um, of uh, you know, someone being guided through hell uh, to experience what it's like and then through purgatory and then through paradise. Gotta be honest with you, the best bit's the hell bit. Um, that's the bit with all the sort of action going on. Purgatory's not that bad. Paradise, by by contrast, is kind of a little bit tedious <laughs> because really it's the, it's the hell stuff that resonates so much. I think that's because hell just makes sense to us in many ways. The idea of perfection and, 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 and constant loveliness is uh, it can feel iffy to us you know i think we can struggle with the idea and think ah i can't get my head around the idea of, of utter perfection but we do know what it's like to be in pain and we do want to know what it's like to be burned alive like well we can imagine it at least because we felt physical pain um and so therefore i think it's easier for us to to, to connect and understand the darker images and i think that's why the hell sections of the divine comedy have been the ones that have resonated and there's an amazing symbolism and uh 
some just sh like shocking and scary images in here and uh, obviously the the language is 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 old but um, you know you can read through this and get some really quite uh, quite strong amazing ideas don't feel like you're an idiot though if you read this and you kind of struggle to understand some of it you know some of it is written in a, in, in in a completely different age um, but it's worth checking out and worth trying to uh, get your head around because this stuff is classic um, and has just some some stunning ideas um, some brutal ideas of what the afterlife could be um, Milton's Paradise Lost I read this at school I remember not this version like not this size version I read it in a smaller just uh, you know classic edition um, but this is again the complete and unabridged version with illustrations by Gustav Doré and um, he does a great, uh, this, this, this is a, a great exploration uh, by John Milton um, of, you know, where is our place in the universe and how do we deal um, with good and evil and the knowledge of that once we have, have got it. It's been a very influential book and it's, you know, there's a, there's a lot of Satan in it. If you like Satan, <laughs> you, like, you like reading about him and chatting, uh, people chatting with, uh, with the devil and trying to get their, um, you know, trying to understand their relationship with God and all that sort of thing. Um, this kind of intellectual and spiritual quest in the face of uh, despair and redemption. That's what it says on the back. Loads of great pictures too. So now what have we got next? Oh yes, Richard Freeman. Ta-da! Richard Freeman is an interesting bloke. Um, he's an Englishman. Um, he's a cryptozoologist. And I mean, if you don't sure what that is, that means it's a study of hidden animals. And he literally, he travels around the world like hunting for the Mongolian death worm um, or like for Sasquatch, Bigfoot and all that sort of thing. He really is a, 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 a bit of a kind of luminary in the world of monster hunting and takes it very seriously and um, explores it. I think it's great that he does that and, and it's really cool the sort of stuff he gets into. Um, so he really knows his stuff. But as well as being a cryptozoologist, he also has a really great love of um, classic horror. And he and I have chatted a few times, we've met him a, a few times now. And um, we have we have similar tastes in terms of we, we are kind of really drawn to the horror of the 70s and, 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 and and particularly kind of UK horror, which scared us as a kid. And that's one of the reasons why I enjoyed this book of fiction that he's written called Green Unpleasant Land, 18 Tales of British Horror, because reading it really does feel like it's a classic, like Amicus movie or an anthology horror movie from the 70s that nobody told you about. And then all of a sudden you read the script for it because all these stories just, you can, you're, I'm reading them and I'm thinking these would have worked great or would work great in a 70s horror type environments he's got another book by the way out which um, i haven't read this yet but it looks really interesting um it's called hyakumongatari it's not easy to say um and tales of japanese horror is what is contained in here um hyakumongatari according to the back cover is this tradition in um ancient or edu period japan um, of reading stories, scary stories to one another in ca by candlelight. And um, as people would tell stories of ghosts and monsters and the paranormal, um, a, a sort of a blue horned demon could possibly appear. This this book by Richard is, is is a collection of those sorts of stories. Like I say, I haven't read it yet, but it's on, it's on my list to get to because um, I enjoyed his last book. And so this is worth checking out, Richard Freeman's um, Hyaki Mongatari. Oh, by the way, uh, it's worth, worth, worth mentioning. Uh, Richard's very uh, open about his opinions about various things. And um, so, for example, in the introduction to this book, uh, if you're a fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, I never really watched it, but if you did and you love it, you might struggle with him uh, saying that it's it, that it's just rubbish, um, that he hates irritating, t a god awful Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He's very happy to kind of, uh, <laughs> he's not a big fan of those types of horror things. And this book was an attempt to return to the horror that he that resonated with him in his youth. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> but I found that quite fun that he was so open about how he felt about some of this stuff. Lastly, 
This is an interesting book um, called Eerie Planet, a pictorial study of some of the darkest places in history. This is written by uh, Marky HK. I hope I'm saying your name right there, Marky. Um, and uh, he is um, from Australia. He's a writer um, and has written various things. Uh, I think he's written like a history of punk or something. Um, he's a member of the uh, Australian Church of Satan, as far as I as far as I know. Um, don't let that scare you. Uh, don't let that put you off. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a decent guy, for, as far as I know. You know he, he, he explores in this book um, the dark, spooky places in on our planet and has traveled all across the globe to get a glimpse of these places um, and I found it interesting some of the places that he had visited to some of the places that I'd never even heard of um, including annoyingly for example like I was in Loch Ness uh, a little while just just before I read this book actually stayed at Loch Ness right on the loch side um, right near the water for a few days um, and I hadn't fully appreciated that the one of the homes of Alistair Crowley um, was just up the road and uh, Bolskin House they call it I think and you know if I'd read this first I would have known that it was there and I would have went out and checked it out and tried to track it down um, but I didn't and so I missed it so it's that it's, it's good for that sort of thing this book is filled with their uh, photographs that he took um, the black and white photographs that's not a disaster um, but you know if you're expecting a big glossy color book it's not quite that but there's still some great pictures Alcatraz he's been to also this was quite helpful he visited um, the Hellfire Caves in England which were which are these kind of underground caves in a place called Wickham um, where they apparently like gentleman society used to have all of these weird rituals and orgies and stuff like that he traveled all the way from Australia to go to it I read this and think hang on a minute Wickham's just down the road from me it's about an hour away and so I hopped in the car drove down and because of the recommendation of this book, went to visit the caves and really enjoyed it and found it interesting and made a video actually while I was down there. So I should probably put that together, edit it sometime and let you see that. But yeah, anyway, it's worth checking this out um, if you're interested in this sort of um, thing. It's not, it, it won't take you a long time to read, despite the fact that it's quite a big sort of coffee size coffee table size book um, you know a lot of it is pictures and so there isn't there isn't stacks and stacks of writing that didn't bother me um, but it's it, it will it will bring up some really interesting parts of the world you might never have realized were there and, and were spooky and you might want to check those out oh by the way he's got a new book coming out I haven't seen what it looks like yet but it's about horror movies I've contributed a little section to that book um, which is about horror remakes anyway there you have it. I think we better leave it there. Just looking at the clock. Been waffling on for a long time. But yeah, horror books are great, aren't they? Um, you know, we can watch horror movies. And the, uh, I, um, as you know, I love doing that. But there's nothing like just kicking back and sort of sitting with a book. Cup of tea, glass of whiskey or something with ice clinking if you're into that. And just, you know, pouring over the pages of um, sort of spooky, scary and gothic ideas um for so many years uh, we have been telling each other these scary stories and we seem obsessed with it which is one of the reasons why um you know i wrote that book the frighteners to explore why we like that and um we consistently do these books keep getting released and these old books you know of frankenstein of um paradise lost edgar Allan poe you know written hundreds of years ago and yet what they keep getting reprinted and reprinted and reprinted again because we are drawn to the morbid. We can't help ourselves. I think that is not a sign of insanity. I think that's a sign of humanity. We're just normal people trying to grasp what it's like to be living in a world of suffering and scary things that do exist in real life. We try to deal with that in our own way by watching scary movies, playing scary video games and reading spooky scary books so why don't you uh, check out some of these books um or if you want to check out some of my books uh in shops and stuff like that but for now i think i'll leave it there thank you for listening um and have a great week read some good stuff and don't forget the flicks the church for god Oh, he's got another book out. I haven't read this one yet. Um, this is uh, an interesting looking one, which is called uh, Hayakum... No. Yakumungatari. 
He's got another book out as well, by the way, which I haven't read this one yet, but it looks really interesting. It's um, Hyakumon... He's got another book, by the way, out, which um, I haven't read this yet, but it looks really interesting. Um, it's called Hyakumon Katari. It's not easy to say. 